much. Welcome everybody to this invited talk, the logic section of the ICM 2022. My name is Ulrich Kohlenbach. I'm professor of mathematics at the Technical University of Darmstadt. And it's my great pleasure to introduce our speaker, Professor Dimitri Zuk, who um, graduated in 2006 with distinction from the Department of Mathematics of uh, Moscow State University, where he then continued his postgraduate studies in the sub-department of mathematical theory of intelligent systems, where he did a celebrated work on automata theory. He is mostly most well known for his 2017 spectacular solution of a long-standing open problem, namely the dichotomy conjecture of Feder and Vardy on uh, constraint satisfaction problems, which independently at the same time was also solved by Andrei Bulatov. Um, the solution of this conjecture depends heavily on uh, algebraic approach and the connection between universal algebra and constraint satisfaction problems. And I guess we will hear uh, also uh, something about this today. And so uh, Professor Luke agreed uh, to leave a couple of minutes at the end. So if you have questions, you can type them in uh, Discord. And if time permits, he can address them live and otherwise uh, after the session. Okay, now the floor is all yours, please, Professor Zuk. Thank you very much for the introduction. And it's, of course, a great honor for me to give a talk here. And I will talk about constraint satisfaction problem and its complexity. But I want to start with an example. Uh, suppose we have system of linear equations in a field, modular two. So all the variables are from zero one. We know that this problem is easy and this problem can be easily solved by Gaussian elimination in polynomial time. But now imagine that we have all the equations modular two, but one equation in integers. It turned out that this problem is already in P-heart. And my third example is very similar. We have system of linear equations modular two, and then we add one equation modular 24. What is the complexity of this problem? And it turned out that nobody knows. This is an open question. And this is amazing that even for such a simple question, we don't know the answer, we, we don't know the complexity. Okay, what I want to talk about today, I want to discuss complex class P and P, and I want to uh, consider this uh, complexity classes using the CSP framework. And for CSP over finite domain, now we know that we have a border between P and NP. And now we want to understand this border. We want to understand what makes problem easy and what makes problem difficult. What is CSP? CSP is a very general problem. Uh, we have set of variables, we have set of respective domains, and we have set of constraints. And uh, as Andrei Bulatov, which is very famous uh, in the area of CSP, usually argues in his talk, uh, almost any problem we have in our life is a constraint satisfaction problem. Every, every time we search something in the internet, every time we make a schedule, we actually solve constraint satisfaction problem. I will give you two examples from real life. First example is map coloring. So we assume that we have a map and we want to color uh, territories so that adjacent territories have different colors. Second example from real life is Sudoku. So here, uh, every open square uh, is a variable. The domain of every variable is uh, numbers from one to nine. And for every row, for every column, for every region like this, we have a constraint. Okay, so we know that in general, constraint satisfaction problem isn't be hard. And to obtain tractable cases, usually what we do, we restrict our constant language. So what we do? Suppose we have a set of relations on a finite set A. Then for every uh, gamma, we define a decision problem. And this gamma is called a constant language. Uh, this decision problem is like this. We, uh, we are given a conjunction of relations. All the relations are from gamma. And we need to check whether this formula is satisfiable. So for different gamma, we have different decision problems. One example, if we are on three element domain and we have just order and strict order, then, for example, this instance has no solutions on three element domain, but this instance has a solution, for example, 0, 0, 0. And what we want to understand, we want to understand and uh, we want to know the complexity of CSP for different constant languages gamma. Okay, uh, now I want to show you three canonical examples. The first example is a graph to coloring. So it seems that you have a graph and you want to color its vertices so that adjacent vertices have different colors. So this is just constraint satisfaction problem where you have two elements, red and blue in your domain, and you have just one predicate inequality in your constant language. What we know about this problem? We know that this problem is easy because uh, how we can solve it? 
we just choose some vertex and we choose some color for this vertex. Then this uh, two vertexes should be blue. These two vertexes, three vertexes should be red. And that's we, uh, how we get a contradiction. And this actually means that this um, graph has an odd cycle, which means that it cannot be colored into two colors. So what we actually have, we just check some local conditions and either we can color everything and everything is correct, or we get a contradiction because we get an odd cycle. So this kind of problem can be solved by local consistency checking. And this is the first method on uh, how to solve CSP in polynomial time. Okay, uh, the second canonical example is system of linear equations. Here, system of linear equations modulo three. So in this case, we have three elements, zero, one, two in our domain, and uh, our constraint language consists of all linear equations modulo three. And we know that this problem can be solved by Gaussian elimination in polynomial time. So this problem is also easy, and our second method is Gaussian elimination. And of course, the third canonical example is graph three coloring. So everything is the same. We have just three colors, red, blue, and green. And we have just one predicate inequality in our constant language. So we want to color a graph into three colors so that adjacent vertexes have different colors. If you try to solve this problem locally, starting from some vertex and uh, try to get uh, some contradiction locally, then we cannot get any contradiction. But uh, if you try to find a solution to this concrete instance, uh, we will see that there is no solution because if this is blue, this is green, this is blue, and this two are red, and this is a contradiction. But actually, we can prove that this problem isn't hard. So we believe that this problem cannot be solved in polynomial time. Okay, so now we have three canonical examples and two methods how to solve CSP. Let me show you a picture. So, for example, if we want to check uh, satisfiability of 2CNF, this problem can be solved in polynomial time. Uh, satisfiability of 3CNF, this problem isn't hard. For linear equations, we have a fast algorithm. For graph 2 coloring, we have a fast algorithm. And for graph 3 coloring, this problem is NP hard. And that's what we want to understand. We want to understand why some problems are in P while other problems are in P hard. Okay, to understand this border, first I want to explain you a very simple idea. How we can go from one constant language to another constant language. Uh, if you look at the definition of CSP, it's actually um, like this. Given a sentence uh, where we use only conjunctions and uh, all the variables are existentially quantified. So we just need to evaluate this sentence. And then uh, by positive Prim, uh, primitive positive definition, I mean uh, formula like this. So in the formula, I use only essential quantifiers and conjunctions. So using such formulas, I can um, define new relations from some relations R1 and so on Rs. And you can see that this uh, PP definition and uh, the definition of CSP are very similar. I use the same quantifiers, I use uh, the same connectivity. And now it's clear that we can reduce from one constant language to another. And this uh, fact was first noticed by Jevons in 1998. So what he noticed, he noticed that if we have two finite constant languages, and if gamma 2, PP defines gamma 1, so every relation from gamma 1 can be represented by this kind of formula, then CSP over gamma 1 is log space reducible to CSP over gamma 2. And this reduction is very simple. What we do, we just take our instance uh, of CSP over gamma 1, and then we replace every constraint of gamma 1 by the corresponding PP definition. And that's our new instance of CSP. So it's very simple, but this uh, reduction is very pow powerful, uh, as you will see. OK, and now to understand when we can PP define one language from another, we need uh, an amazing algebraic fact saying that uh, gamma 2, PP defines gamma 1 if and only if every operation preserving gamma 2 preserves gamma 1. OK, probably you don't know what it means to preserve uh, constant language. I will explain. Uh, suppose we have an operation, so it's a mapping and a relation, so set of tuples. We say that an operation F preserves relation R. Uh, if whenever we take any tuples from the relation, I write uh, these tuples as columns. Uh, if we apply our operation coordinate wise to these tuples, then I get uh, another tuple or a column. This column should be from the relation. This is very natural. And now I will show you the easiest example I know. 
Suppose we have uh, a linear order relation on the set 0, 1, 2. So this relation can be um, written as a matrix like this. So I just listed all the tuples or the pairs of this relation. So here columns are tuples. Then what it means that operation preserves this relation? It means that for two comparable tuples, the results are comparable. So this just means that this function is monotone. So it should be very familiar to each of you that uh, preserving a linear order just means that uh, function is monotone. But now you can do exactly the same for any other relation. Okay, so um, it turned out that using this one simple notion, we can characterize the border between P and then P for the CSP. Okay, so now I'm ready to formulate CSP dichotomy conjecture, which was proved uh, by Andrei Bulatov and myself in 2017 independently. So what we proved? We proved that CSP over gamma is solvable in polynomial time if there exists a weak non operation, operation preserving gamma, and it's NP complete otherwise. Uh, what is a weak non operation we can use? This is any operation satisfying this identity. So you can see that I just put axes everywhere, and in one place I put y. So it does not it doesn't matter where I put y, I should get the same result. As an example of we can you, you may consider disjunction, conjunction, majority operation, any symmetric operation. So what does it means? It means that whenever uh, we have some strong operation preserving our constant language, it means that our constant language is somehow symmetric then the problem can be solved in polynomial time. In all other cases, the problem is NP complete. Okay, and now I want to consider these two situations, uh, NP complete and solved in polynomial time in more detail. Uh, first consider hardness part. Uh, in 2007, Mikos Marotti and Ralph McKenzie proved uh, a strong algebraic fact. Uh, I will formulate, uh, I will give an easy formulation of this fact, but still. So what they proved? They proved that if we have a constant language, uh, gamma, which is not preserved by any weak unanimity operation, here I just draw a domain A, then there exists subset D of this domain, and there is some partition of this domain into two sets B0 and B1, such that this relation is PP definable from gamma. And if you look at this relation, this is just not all equal, where B0 and B1 uh, play the role of 0 and 1, respectively. OK, so they proved uh, that uh, whenever we don't have B and U, we have some D, and we have B0, B1, and we have this not all equal relation. But actually, they proved much more. They proved that here inside D models this partition, we have all the relations. And what it means for us? It means that uh, if gamma is not preserved by a weak in U, then CSP over not all equal is log space reducible to CSP over gamma. And this immediately uh, means that CSP over gamma isn't P-complete. But actually, we can prove more. We can prove this. We can prove that for any finite constant language delta, CSP over delta is log space reducible to CSP over gamma. And this is really amazing. So it means that uh, we have one proof for all the hardness cases. If we don't have weak in U, then CSP over any language can be reduced to this concrete uh, constant language. OK, that's what I wanted to say about hardness part. Now, what about tractable part? Uh, what do we know about uh, tractable cases for two-element domain? For example, for two-element domain, we have two SAT. What it is? It just means that uh, our constant language consists of relations like this. It's probably a bit unusual way how to write this. But this is just the junction of equalities, where A, B are from 0, 1. Uh, another case we can solve in polynomial time for two-element domain is uh, Hornsat. In this case, uh, our constant language gamma consists of relations like this or like this, where A n is greater or equal to 0. OK, and the third case, of course, is system of linear equations. If all our constraints are linear equations, we also can solve this problem in polynomial time. OK, now let's try to generalize this for, for the general case. And first, generalization is very simple. Assume that R is a multi-sorted relation on 0, 1. So what I mean by this? I mean that uh, all the coordinates, all the variables of R are of different sorts. And this means that on different coordinates, I may have different weak unanimity operations. So this is a natural generalization of uh, 
two element domain. And so what we can prove? We can prove that if R is preserved by uh, a weak unanimity operation, then this R can be represented as a conjunction of other relations, R1 and so on, Rs, such that each relation Ri is PP definable from R and is of the form. So actually, this means that when we solve constraint satisfaction problem, we may assume that all our relations all exist. The junction of linear equations, the first linear equation is not trivial, or other uh, linear equations are just equalities. And you see that this is very similar to what we have for uh, the previous two cases, for two sat and horn sat and system of linear equations. OK, but this is not that interesting because this is only for two element domain. But it turned out that we can generalize this for the general case. So what we can prove? Uh, this is not a theorem because uh, to make a theorem, I need to put much more conditions, but uh, the idea should be clear. So if R is preserved by a weak unanimity operation, then R can be represented as a conjunction of uh, other relations, such that each relation Ri is PP definable from R. So it can be defined by this uh, formula with existential quantifiers and uh, conjunctions. And in every relation, I have some part, which is uh, really regular and defined by linear equations and uh, equalities. Let me show you in a picture. So suppose we have a ternary relation R on A. So we have this A cubed. So what I claim, I claim that inside this uh, A cube, I can find some smaller cube uh, such that Inside this smaller cube, our relation is uh, regular. Our relation is defined by conjun uh, the junction of linear equations and equalities. And this actually is the main reason why we can solve this problem in polynomial time. Because it turns out that whenever we have peak in U, all the relations uh, have regular structure. OK. So assume that all our relations all exist. The junction of uh, such uh, equalities, uh, linear equations. This is my toy algorithm. It's uh, not real algorithm, but for example, it works for a uh, two element multi sorted case. If we have a constraint x equals c, then what we do, obviously, we just uh, substitute this value and simplify and we just eliminate this variable. Uh, if we have two constraints like this, then we calculate transitive closure. Okay, and of course, we simplify like this. And then the main step, we just take all the linear equations. So if we have a constraints without this part, and we just solve the system linear uh, system of linear equations using Gaussian elim elimination. And if we can derive that some variable is equal to C, we just add this uh, constraint to our instance. And that's it. And then we just repeat these four steps. And this is actually my dream algorithm, because uh, in real life, Algorithm is much harder, but I believe that uh, we should work on this to make it easier because now it's not clear how to uh, obtain these linear equations in the general case because everything can be mixed in a very difficult way. Okay, to sum up, uh, the key moment is uh, uh, the existence of weak and new polymorphism. If we don't have weak and new polymorphism, then we know that any CSP can be expressed uh, using this concrete constant language. And this means that the problem isn't be complete. OK, if we have weak and new polymorphism, then we know that every relation is somehow a mix of horn sat, two sat, and linear case. They can be mixed in a very difficult way, but still, every relation is just like this. And then what we do? The first two cases are solved by local consistency checking, and the last case is solved by Gaussian elimination. So the general algorithm is just some mix, uh, some very difficult combination of local consistency and Gaussian elimination. OK, that's what we know about uh, CSP over finite domain. But now let's look at the bigger picture. So for CSP over finite domain, we have a complete classification. But there are many other cases. For example, we may consider CSP over infinite domain. What we know about this case? Uh, here, everything is the same, but we assume that our domain is set of all rational numbers Q. We define CSP in the same way. And uh, what do we have? For CSP over finite domain, we have only P and NP, and we have a nice border between them. 
here uh, we can uh, easily prove that for some uh, constant language, the problem can be even undecidable. And so this means that for CSP over infinite domain, we have much larger complexity classes. But uh, usually mathematicians restrict uh, themselves to um, the class where uh, we are always inside NP. And they still study the border between P and NP, NP complete. Okay. So anyway, uh, for infinite domain, everything is much more complicated. That's why uh, I'm going to give you a few examples and that's it. First example, assume that we have just uh, this order predicate in our constant language. What is the complexity of this problem? For example, what instance we might have? If we have an instance like this, then it's clear that it has a solution. It's uh, sufficient to take x1 smaller than x2 smaller than x3. Okay, but if we consider this three cycle, obviously it has no solutions. And you may see that this problem is easy because to check whether we have a solution, it's sufficient to check whether we don't have an oriented cycle. And of course, it's a, a polynomial time procedure to check whether we have a, an oriented cycle. Okay, so for this concrete language, everything is easy. But what if we make it harder? Like, uh, what if we consider one ternary relation defined by this? Uh, so it means that y is in between x and z. It turned out that for this language, uh, the problem isn't P complete. OK, another example. Uh, this is, again, ternary relation, saying that two variables are equal, and they're smaller than the remaining variable. It turned out that this problem is in P. And it's interesting that uh, this problem is uh, solved by uh, reduction to linear equations. So again, we see that uh, whenever the problem is solved in polynomial time, we reduce to some linear equations and we use uh, more or less the same Gaussian elimination. Okay, so for this language, the problem is in P. If we uh, leave only uh, two parts of this disjunction, then the problem isn't P complete. But if we add one more uh, predicate to this thought uh, constant language, then the problem is NP complete. So you see that for different constant languages, uh, the problem is either P or NP complete. And again, we want to understand the border between P and NP. And what we have now, uh, now we have full classification of the complexity for all constant languages that are first order definable using order. So we already have some classifications, but in general, the problem is widely open. And of course, it's really important to understand this because that uh, would mean that we understand this complexity classes P and then P better. Okay, let's go back to a bigger picture. For CSP over infinite domain, we have some classifications. Now let's go to my favorite type of CSP. It's called QCSP or quantified CSP what it is. Um, as I said before, CSP is just a problem to evaluate a sentence like this. So all the variables are existentially quantified. And what is QCSP? QCSP is exactly the same, but this time I am allowed to use both quantifiers, universal and existential. One example, if we are on Trillman domain and we have just one predicate inequality in our constant language, then we may consider this instance. So what it is, for every x, there exist y1, y2, such that all of them are different. I am on three element domain, and it's clear that this is correct sentence. Then for every x1, x2, x3, there exist y, such that y is different from all of them. And you may see that it's false. But for this one uh, sentence, it's much harder to understand whether it's true or not, but you may check that this is still true. So that is a problem. And again, what we want to understand, we want to understand the complexity of QCSP for different constant language uh, gamma. Okay, let me show you the picture. So for CSP, we have P and NP. And for QCSP, we know that if we have all um, the relations in our constant language, then the problem is P space complete. So we have another complex class, P space. And so QCSP is something like this. And uh, so now we still don't know whether P is equal to P space. And that's why it's so important to understand the border between P space and P. And here we can do this using this QCSP framework. 
So we just consider different constant languages and we want to understand the complexity. And we want to understand this border between P space and P and P. Okay, so what we know. Um, as I said, uh, if we have all the predicates in our constant language, the problem is P space complete. But if gamma consists of just linear equations, so imagine you have system of linear equations and you add uh, universal quantifiers, existential quantifiers in any order. It turned out that you can still check the sentence in polynomial time. So in this case, uh, it's in P. And uh, we know that on two element domain, these are the only complexity classes we can achieve. So for any constant language on two element domain, QCSP over gamma is either in P or P space complete. Okay, what else we know? Uh, there is an easy idea how we can obtain and P complete uh, constant language. Assume that we add a star element to our domain and assume that uh, all our relations are false on this new star element. In this case, you may see that QCSP is equivalent to CSP because uh, it doesn't make any sense to use a universal quantifier. Whenever we use universal quantifier, it means that the sentence is false. So by this trick, we can easily build a constant language given and P complete complexity class. Okay, but then, and yeah, I forgot to say that for many years, uh, we believe that these three complexity classes are the only complexity classes that can be obtained as QCSP for some constant languages gamma, for some constant language gamma. But then in 2018, we discovered a new constant language on trailman domain, giving this complexity class, couldn't be complete. And then, we discovered another constant language on four element domain, such that QCSP over this language is DP complete. And then another constant language uh, and another complex class. And the reason I'm uh, showing you these monsters is because we were so much surprised when we found and discovered these complexity classes that we called the monsters. And uh, it was so unexpected in the area of CSP to obtain this theta 2P or DP complete uh, complexity classes. Anyway, so now we have many different complexity classes, but we still have some classifications. For example, on Freelman domain, if you consider constant languages having all constants, uh, we know that QCSP over any constant language is either in P or NP complete or coin P complete or P space complete. And we have a nice characterization so we know when we have each case. Okay, so only this for Guy CP. And a recent result from uh, last year, I managed to prove that for any constant language, QCSP over this language is either P space complete or in pi to P. So you see that we have a big gap between pi to P and P space. We will never find a constant language such as the complexities like uh, pi uh, four or something like this. So that's what we know. We know that we have nothing between pi to P and P space. And here you can see other complexity classes I mentioned. And for other complexity classes, uh, I have a, a monster. By this, I mean that I have a constant language given um, this complexity class. And then for some time, I wasn't sure that this pi to p exists. I tried to prove that we have nothing between theta to p and p space. But then after some time, I discovered another constant language on six element domain, such that QCSP over this language is pi to p complete. And so now you may count that we have seven uh, complexity classes, and I believe this is everything. So now I believe we just need to prove that for any constant language, these are the only complexity classes we can achieve. And it would be really great to understand uh, border between each of uh, each pair of these classes. Like now, I almost understood this border between P space and Pi to P, but we need to go further and we need to understand other, other borders. Okay. That's what we know about uh, complexity of QCSP. We have some partial classifications even for larger domain. What about infinite domain? Again, uh, our domain is set of all rational numbers. The definition of QCSP is the same. And uh, as I said, for CSP over infinite domain, everything is rather complicated, even to formulate uh, some dichotomy. So um, I'm going to give you just some examples. Very simple, probably the easiest constant language is a constant language consisting of just equality. 
So what if we can see the QCSP over the equality on infinite domain? For example, we may consider this instance. For every x1, there exists x2, x3, x4, such that all of them are equal. And this is definitely true. For every x1, x4, there exists x2, x3, such that all of them are equal. And this is definitely false. And if you think about this problem for a minute, you will notice that this problem is easy. So how to solve this problem? You just uh, consider connected components of the graph we obtain. And then if in one connected component, you have two universal quantifiers, then it's a problem and so on. So it's easy to notice that this problem can be solved in polynomial time. Okay, but uh, what if we consider disjunction of two equalities? It turns out that this problem is already in p-complete. Okay, what if we replace disjunction by implication? It turns out that this problem is p-space complete. Okay, now if we consider ternary implication, so the same relation, but this time we have only three variables. And uh, the complexity of this uh, problem was an open question for more than 10 years. And again, last year, we proved that this problem is p-space complete. And now using this solution, uh, we have a complete classification of the complexity for all constant languages that are Boolean combinations of equalities. So you, you may uh, create any language, like in these four examples. And for any language, we know the answer. We know that the complexity is either P or NP complete or P space complete. So here we also have some classifications, but as I said before, we considered only the easiest uh, relation, the easiest predicate equality and everything we can build from this easiest um, equation. If we add order, we already don't know the complexity for all the constant languages. Okay, for example, you may try to understand the complexity of this problem, like equality implies inequality. Okay, so here we have some classifications. Let's go on. Uh, promise CSP. Uh, okay, not promise, value CSP. Unfortunately, I cannot see the top. Yeah, value CSP. What if uh, instead of uh, predicates, we have cost functions? So any mappings to Q with infinity. It seems like much more general problem. So how do we define uh, a decision problem? Uh, for every uh, set of cross functions, gamma, we define a problem like this, given a threshold T and the sum like this, where all these cross functions are from gamma, of course, and we need to decide whether this uh, inequality is satisfiable. One example, assume that we are on two element domain, and our cost function is just like this. Whenever variables are equal, it's one, otherwise it's zero. Then our uh, value CSP instance can be like this. So we need to check whether we can find some values for x1, x2, x3, such as this is smaller than two. And you may see actually uh, that value CSP over this concrete cost function is equivalent to max cut. And we know that this problem is in P complete, so this problem is not P complete. Anyway, so you see, this is a generalization of CSP. And it turned out that we know the complexity for any set of cost functions. Uh, in 2015, this result was obtained modular CSP dichotomy conjecture. And after 2017, we have a complete proof. So we know that for any set of cost functions, this problem is either in P or NP complete. OK. So here we have a full classification. Um, next CSP, promise CSP. Assume that uh, we have two copies of uh, every relation, uh, two versions, weak and strong. And again, uh, what we get is an instance. Uh, as an instance, we get a conjunction of predicates. And we remember that we have two copies of every predicate. And we need to distinguish between two cases. Uh, either strong version is satisfied or even weak version is not satisfied. So we kind of get a promise that it's never in the middle. And uh, by middle, I mean that weak version is satisfied, but strong is not satisfied. Let me give you an example. Suppose a strong version of relation is one in three. So it's true if, we ne if exactly one element is one, other uh, elements are zeros. And weak version is not a weak one. So it's all tuples, but zero, 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 and one, one, one. We know that CSP over each of them is anti-hard, but it turned out that promise CSP over this pair 
is in P. Yeah, so you are given an instance, and if you replace one and three by not all equal, uh, you don't change the result. If it was satisfied, then it's still satisfied. That's your promise. Okay, so it turns out that this problem uh, can be solved in polynomial time. So promise actually helps. And uh, the solution of this problem is also nice. So we solve this problem by a reduction to something, uh, to some linear equations. So again, the only method we know, except for uh, local consistency checking, is uh, solving linear equations. Okay, here we don't have uh, strong results. Um, we, even for two element domain, we don't know the complexity for any constant language gamma. And this is the only complexity classification I know for two element domain. So we know complexity for gamma consisting of symmetric relations on zero one. But in general, even for two element domain, the problem is widely open. Okay, and let me give you uh, one more example. Uh, it's called KL colorability. So assume that you have two integers, K and L. K is smaller than L. And you are given a graph, G. And uh, you want to distinguish between two cases. Uh, graph is K colorable, and graph is not even L colorable. So you uh, have a promise that the uh, chromatic number of this graph is uh, not in between K and L. And we want to know the complexity of this decision problem. And uh, now we know we don't know the complexity even for three six colorability. And we don't even know complexity for three billion colorability. So can you imagine that uh, if I give you uh, a graph and I promise to you that uh, uh, this graph can be colored into three colors, but then I ask you to color this graph into billion colors. So you have a lot of freedom. And uh, we still don't know how to solve this problem in polynomial time. And moreover, most uh, mathematicians believe that this problem is, is difficult. So it can be solved in polynomial time, even in this way, like 3 billion. OK. Uh, so here we have some classifications. Counting CSP. Assume that. Uh, Again, we have uh, some set of relations on the fine set A, but this time, instead of checking whether there exists a solution, we want to count all the solutions. And we want to know the complexity of this problem. And here we have full classification. We know complexity of this problem for any constant language gamma, and this result was obtained by Andre Boratov in 2008. Okay, let's go on. Uh, let's go in another direction. Assume that uh, instead of changing CSP, we just add uh, another constraint, global constraint. So we have our original instance, and then we add uh, one global constraint. What can it be? For example, we may consider uh, surjectivity. So we require our solution to be surjective. OK, let me write it down. Uh, suppose we have a set of relations on set A, then by uh, surjective CSP over gamma, I mean the following decision problem. Given the same conjunction of uh, predicates, all the predicates are from gamma, and we need to check whether it has a surjective solution. So any element from our domain should appear in the solution. And here I give you an example. Like if we have just order on three element domain in our constant language, then for example, this instance has a surjective solution 0, 1, 2, 2. But this instance, uh, has a solution, for example, 0, 0, 0, but this solution is not surjective. And yes, we want to know the complexity of this surjective constraint satisfaction problem. Another uh, natural way how to look uh, at this problem is at uh, surjective graph uh, homomorphism problem. So assume that graph H is fixed. Then for every graph H, I have the following decision problem. Given a graph G, and we need to check whether there exists a surjective homomorphism from G to H. So I want to map vertices of G to vertices of H. This mapping should be surjective. And I want edges to go to edges. And it's clear that this problem is equivalent to surjective CSP over one relation corresponding to this graph H. And it turned out that we still don't know the complexity of this problem. We know the complexity for two element domain, but already for three element domain, we don't know the answer. And another interesting thing is that uh, for some 
graphs like uh, reflexive four cycle and uh, six cycle, the problem was an open, uh, the complex was an open question for many years. And this is amazing because uh, this problem has such an easy formulation. You just need to check whether a graph can be subjectively mapped to a concrete four cycle. And for more than 10 years, we did not know the complexity. Okay, so uh, we have some results. But in general, we know almost nothing about this problem. We don't have a conjecture. We have no idea how the characterization looks like. But we still believe that it's always either Sobon polynomial time or NP complete. And again, we want to understand the border between P and NP here. Okay, so here I have much more examples. Like instead of uh, Surjective global constraint, I may require my solution to be balanced. It means that uh, I have an equal number of every element in the solution. I will skip this. Or I um, may require uh, a solution to have an exact number of zeros and ones and twos and so on. For example, I can give you a system of linear equations and uh, I can ask you to find a solution having exactly five zeros and six ones. And here, we have a complete classification. So, and many, many other uh, variations of CSP, which are interesting and which appeared uh, somewhere in computer science. And in my opinion, this is a very natural way how to go if you want to understand uh, these complex classes P and P complete and P space. We just consider these concrete problems and we try to understand why some problems are easy and some other problems are difficult and to understand this border. And many problems are still open, so you are welcome to try to solve it. And uh, here we probably end. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Professor Zuk, for this exciting talk, giving you a very comprehensive overview about the amazing progress which has been made in recent years on the classification of constraint satisfaction problems and the many open problems still left. So is there any uh, question you see in a Discord you may want to address in the remaining three minutes? Let me see uh, myself whether I can... I'm not sure I'm looking at the right place, but let me try. Let me see whether I can see here. No, I, I don't know whether there is. So this one probably the, the audience have to think about also the previous talk, the questions came, came later. And so then you, I guess, will be available uh, in the next couple of days or today later to address these. Great. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I think then we are finishing exactly on. And so let's thank you again for this very beautiful talk and goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for being a moderator.